We're ready. <clears throat> Maggie Richard of Diamond, Louisiana, was one of the few residing residents who refused to relocate her neighborhood after visible signs of a shell plant releasing tons of carbon dioxide in her neighborhood and affecting her neighbors. A close resident to Maggie ended up dying within her house caused from a fire. The fire was caused from a gas pipe leak from the shell plant underneath her house. Also, within this neighborhood, more of the kids began developing asthma due to the pollution that the shell plant was re uh, releasing. <clears throat> Maggie did not want to relocate as all of her other neighbors decided to do. They wanted to move out and avoid this problem. They thought it was the best solution to this problem. Maggie, however, did not see that. Maggie stayed there and filed a report against the shell plant releasing large quantities of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, not only killing one of her residents, but harming the, the kids as well. Maggie is a great example of a woman who stayed in this neighborhood and faced the impossible, and she changed what everybody else just wanted to run away from. So, <clears throat> according to the Pew Report, they state that the percentage of Americans believing in solid evidence of global warming has increased over the last decade. Approximately 67% of Americans believe that the Earth's temperature has been increasing greatly. This has not changed since the last year, nor since 2009. It has gone up 10 points. They further go on to state that there is a more modest shift in the Republicans' party of treatment on clean energy sources. They state that they need to, that we're going to implement more uh, energy sources on solar, wind, and geothermal, and that once again, the American people have not changed their views on green energy, and that we need to continue doing it. Also, they further state that Americans greatly believe in global warming. They state that 64% of all Americans believe global warming is a serious problem. They state that 39% say it's not too serious, and another 25% say it's not serious at all. So, also, compared to that, 64% of Democrats believe global warming is very serious. By contrast, only 19% of Republicans say that global warming is very serious. The Independent Party says that about 64% say it's a very serious problem. So in this speech today, I will argue that America needs to continue supporting AB 32 and not just California. It needs to be accepted on a federal level. First, I'll argue that global warming emissions are killing millions of people. Secondly, I'll argue that AB 32 will reduce global warming emissions. And lastly, I will agree with my opponent that AB 32 will cost a lot of money. However, the benefits far outweigh the cost. So I mentioned global warming is killing millions of people and will continue to do so if nothing is done about it. According to DARA on Climate and Vulnerability Forum, they state that continuing today's patterns, climate change is going to steal at least 6 million lives by the end of 2030, so approximately <coughs> 700 lives are taken per year and will continue to do so. They also further state that Due to the devastating floods and droughts in China and Philippines and Africa, these patterns are hitting America as well, as, as we can see right now. They also state that if, we, if global warming continues at this current rate, we will lose 700,000 lives by the end, or per year within the next decade. Also, we are going to lose $7 billion if we don't do anything about it, and 0.9% gross domestic product. Also, with the continuation of pollution, it will cause even more harm with climate change, which will also increase death uh, per decade and per years. So, now that I've mentioned the problem with global warming, oh, pardon me, excuse me, according to the Climate <coughs> Vulnerability Report, they state that climate change is with us, it kills, and it steals from livelihoods. They say that it takes from the most, it takes the most from those who have the least and it will continue to do so. It doesn't just affect the poor people, it's going to affect all of us because the cost of this disaster is hidden from many people's um, ideas. They also state that if we don't do anything, it won't be solved. We all need to, together, come up with a better solution that will help everybody's well-being and prosperity. 
So now that I have stated the problem with global warming, I would like to say that AB32 will solve, pardon me, will reduce global warming emissions. According to <clears throat> Dinar Ariel, professor of environment policies and water science, he states that the Air Resources Board plan will continue to implement AB32 and that by the end of 2030, it will reduce global warming emissions 2 to 3 percent. It will reduce them to the 1990s in 2030, which is what we want. They're implementing this law right now and that they will continue to do so and in close collaboration with CARB, they will continue to implement it and reduce global warming emissions. He also states that the, another resources of AB32 is that they are trying to implement the use of biomass. Biomass is when when plants photosynthesize, they extract carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and they convert it into plant biomass. Now by doing this, it will reduce an annual 2.5 million metric ton carbon dioxide per the equivalent. We can do this in one way by farmscaping, which is planting trees and shrubs in hedge groves, which will reduce carbon dioxide emissions by taking them out of the atmosphere and helping convert this energy into plant biomass. This, from farmscaping alone, we will reduce global warming emissions by 2.5 million metric ton carbon dioxide. And in soils alone, it will be 1 million metric ton carbon dioxide. So now that I've stated the solution to Pardon me. Now that I've stated that AB32 will reduce global warming emissions and the problem with global warming, I would like to state that my opponent says, Matthew E. Cahan from UCLA and Navarre University professor, he states in a report that global warming, pardon me, that AB32 will cost to an annual house about 50000 Also, he states by the new Energy Act and retrofitting that by us retrofitting new houses we'll have to increase our cost of a new house and that it's not worth it. Also another opponent of mine states, suspended AB, AB32 states that AB32 is counterproductive and costly to businesses and families and that it's ineffective and inefficient and that it will increase our state deficit and that it will or cut our state spending on environment protection and public health. <laughs> However, my opponent, both of them are wrong because the cost of AB32, that doesn't matter, the benefits of AB32 are far outweighing the cost. According to EDF Renewable Energy, they state that California will continue implementing this law and that it will be closely monitored and regulated. Once again, they state that by the end of 2015, they will start to produce annual reductions of 2-3% to 3 in global warming emissions. Also, they will continue to do it with CARB, a close stakeholder. Also, they state that the cost, that the costs are not as high as many of these opponents are stating and that we will reduce these emissions. Now that I've mentioned the problem with global warming, I want, pardon me, right now California is facing a global warming crisis and we as Republicans and Americans need to do something about it. Today in this speech I argued that AB32 will reduce global warming emissions. First, I argued that global warming is killing millions around the world and it will continue to do something if nobody does anything about it. Secondly, I argued that AB32 will reduce global warming emissions. Lastly, I argued, lastly I agreed with my opponent that yes, the cost of AB32 will be a lot. However, the benefits of AB32 far outweigh the cost because we're going to be saving the planet. We have to remember Maggie here. She wasn't afraid to change what everybody else wanted to just ignore. We need to be more like her and try to change things. Thank you.